this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Mm. I just got a goodie, and I think this is going to comfort somebody, especially those of you who feel like you are just such a mess, and God's got his hands full trying to deal with you. Well, listen to this. <clears throat> For those of you who think God is getting sick and tired of you and your weaknesses, I'm not talking about willful sins that you just do at will. I'm talking about shortcomings, weaknesses, stumbling blocks. Oh, my goodness. Okay, listen, listen, listen. I really hope this lifts your spirit because I'm getting a lot all at one time and I'm trying to, to, to line them up so you get it. <laughs> When God is dealing with us and our imperfections, we have to remember that we have this treasure in earthen vessels, flawed, cracked, leaky, <laughs> damaged. Now, it is only God that's going to put us back together again and make us whole through his inner healing, deliverance, love. Okay, help me keep it together, Lord. The reason I get emotional about this is because God did so much for me. So, of course, everything I got, I want everybody else to get too. Listen, there's a scripture that he just showed me. It's Isaiah Calm down already. Okay. It's Isaiah chapter 42, verse 3. A bruised reed shall he not break. We're talking about Jesus now. And the smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. Listen, some of us are broken or bruised reeds. Some of us are smoking flaxes and some of us are both. Well, what that is saying is a broken person, a bruised broken person, a damaged person. The thing I love about God and the thing I love about the way Jesus handles us he handles us with tender, loving care. He doesn't jerk us around and yank us and beat us and, and, and condemn us. And he corrects, but he doesn't condemn. He comforts. He doesn't put down. He edifies. He rebuilds. He restores. He doesn't take away the little bit that you have left. Some of you have no hope. Some of you are barely hanging on by a thread. You're the, the smoking flax. You're the one whose spark, whose glow is dying out. Your, 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 your fire is just going out so quickly and the only thing left of any fire that's been in you is smoke. And even that is dying down to a, a, a cinder, or just nothingness. Well, one thing about God, he will not blow what you have left. He won't blow that little bit out. He will come to reignite, not to quench. Let me share what I mean. Some of you, I was talking to a friend of mine, earlier and one of the things that they find they find it difficult to trust in God's love for them is because of what they've experienced through flawed love love from other people in their lives so when they mess up, the first thing they're waiting for is for the axe to hit. They're waiting for the axe to fall. And 
they're not realizing that God's love doesn't work that way. Once they experience God's love, they'll know it instantly. But right now, they're still diligently seeking, like some of you. So God gave me an example, and I wanted to keep it in my mind so I wouldn't forget. And I want to share it with you. When you find yourself damaged by other people, hurt, broken, bruised, barely with a spark left in you, just almost at the ed ed end of your rope, on the verge, always on the verge of the temptation to commit suicide, always thinking, what's the use? I'm, I'm not even worth being here. Well, listen to this. Now, I'm not saying this to talk about my husband. I'm, I'm making a point, so please listen to this point. My husband was 100% blind. Now, he and I, when he used to walk, you know, till he got into the wheelchair and I'd push him in, we'd go to a lot of restaurants, we'd sit and we'd have dinner together. That was one of his pleasurable moments in his life. He got to do that. And he was all about food, trust me. So, listen. We would sit and eat. They would bring the drink. They would bring all the different goodies. And inevitably, it wouldn't fail. Maybe maybe once out of every six times we went out to eat together. Bam! He wouldn't know it. He'd be feeling for something else, and he'd knock his glass over. It just wouldn't fail. Now, I'm human. I have levels of impatience, of aggravation, right? But me understanding my husband's blind. That's just going to happen. So if I were inhuman and I didn't really love him like I said, I'd be fussing. Well, what the hell's the matter with you? Can't you be more careful? Why don't you just ask somebody to hand it to you? Everywhere we go, you got to make a mess. Now, some of you do that with broken people who really cannot help it. And because you're intolerant and you have no patience and your love is very limited, you steadily chip away at the little they have left till they get to the point where they feel like well what's the use of me being here well my point in telling you about him spilling the water is if I am human did not get upset with him if I who love him with my flawed love understood my baby's blind of course he's going to do that We'll get over it, no big deal. Well, listen, what's going to happen when you mess up and God sees it? God's love is beyond anything we can imagine. He is love. He understands our failures, our weaknesses. The Bible says that Jesus is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So even if you don't understand how much God loves you, let me at least relay this picture for you so you can understand how patient, how understanding God is with you and your weaknesses. Some of you men have been molested as little boys and you still struggle with those desires even though they were in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They were imposed, they were forced on you, they were, you were violated. And now that area of you is floored and you're struggling with it because you want to please God. And you are fighting the temptations that would lead you back in that direction when you didn't choose that direction in the first place. Now, 
some of you women who have been molested by your fathers. You think the only way to get over on a man is to sit on his lap and make him happy. Give him what he wants. So he'll give you what you want because that's your thinking. Well, that doesn't mean that you're a worthless slut. It means you have been damaged. If I can understand that, how much more can God understand that? Some of you have been beaten and abused. Oh God, help me with this. You've been beaten, you've been over -put, overly punished, overly hurt physically and psychologically because of mistakes you've made as a child. Maybe you broke a glass or maybe you didn't hear somebody right. And like, did you hear what I said? Bam! And next thing you know, you're, you're paying for, you're being punished, you're being uh, uh, brutalized for something you're not even quite understanding. You don't even know why they're mad. But it happened all the time. So you go through life flinching, waiting for the next explosion, waiting for the next person to blow up at you, and you feel like a failure. Ergo, you fail at many things you do because you expect to fail. You're not a loser. You're lost. You're lost in your pain. All right. I'm trying to make things as clear as I can to help you understand. Number one, here's the good news. God can heal all of that. He can heal it. He can heal it. The sad news is some of you have given up on yourselves thanks to other people and their little nasty dispositions and their little nasty ways and things they've done to you, things that you, in areas where you've been victimized. But the good news is God understands all of the ins and the outs. He doesn't need a psychologist to explain it to him. He knows he was there when the stuff was happening. And if you wonder why didn't he stop it, he gave people freedom of choice. And people with the freedom of choice they've been given choose to hurt people with their freedom. And unfortunately, the people they hurt are the ones who get victimized and damaged. They get scarred. And some of those scars never leave them. But good news, they can leave every single one because God is able to heal every single wound, every single cut, every single stab, every fracture of your being can be put back together again. That's why the Bible refers to the potter as the potter wants to put our lives back together again. See, Jesus is tender. He is our Lord and Savior. He is our high priest. And he's touched with the feelings of your infirmities and my infirmities. And he understands. <laughs> God is not waiting to come down on you with an axe. God is not waiting with the with the iron cord and the, and the belt and the paddle and all the other things that have been used against you. God's not going to put cigarettes out on your skin and burn you and torture you for being imperfect. He is waiting with bated breath for you to run to his arms with all your mess, with all your imperfections. Run to his arms. Listen, we make a mess out of things a lot of times because of the brokenness and woundedness. 
when my husband, when his kidneys were failing, there would be times he, we'd be in the middle of a good meal and he'd be enjoying it. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, poof, it would come out and it would be all over him. Well, guess who had to clean up the mess? Well, am I going to be angry with him? No, something's going wrong in his body. The same way in you, something's going wrong in your psyche, in your heart, in your spirit, in your emotions. So you make a mess of things. You're not a loser. You're not a lost cause. You are a work in progress as long as you stay in God's hand. Don't run out of his hands. He's the one that'll clean you up and put you back together again. What would happen if my husband tried to get up with his blind self and try to run from me because he was embarrassed because of what happened? He didn't make that happen. He's victimized by the very thing that's going wrong in his life. So what am I there for? I'm there to encourage him. Clean him up. Bring a meal home. We'll eat it at home. It's okay. You don't feel like eating now? We'll wait a while. No harm done. God is looking at you saying, look, there's no harm done. I can undo what they've done to you. I can heal all of that. But you have got to let me in where it hurts you the most. And I promise you, you won't recognize yourself 10 years from now. When I get through cleaning you up, putting you back together again, healing your wounds, mending your scars, erasing your past, the pain of your past. Trust God's love for you, even if you haven't experienced it yet. Please, look at me as an example of God taking a mess and putting it together. Please, trust yourself in God's hands. No lover, no body, no, no other can do that for you like God. And when God does it, it's a permanent fix. You're fixed permanently in every area that he deals with. And he will deal with all of it. There's nothing for you to be ashamed of. God bless you.